I best scripture that helps uh, me stay in my lane is Jeremiah 29, 11. Uh, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not disaster to give you a future and hope. To me, that means stay in your lane, Mike. <laughs> I got some plans for you. He didn't say, hey, for I know the, the plans for you and Pierce. Hey, Y'all got to get together. He said, for I know the plans for you. That tells me stay focused. Stay focused on me. Stay focused on what I have for you as you capture your plans that I have for you, you can help others. You can help yourself. But once you start going in other people's lane or if you want to use a race horse, they have the, the blinders on. That's to help them stay in the lane and not worry about the horse to the left or right. So he can stay in his lane and pay attention to the jockey uh, uh, that, that's riding him. Because if he gets off track, he starts veering left or veering right. So staying in your lane is, to me, is very important to stay focused on God's purpose for your life, to stay focused on the gifts that he has given you and not focus on somebody else's gifts or not focus on what uh, uh, the gentleman to your right is driving or the big house he has or, or, or whatever he's doing. That's that's his walk, according to what God has for him. And your walk may be different uh, in, in a facet where you may accomplish the same things, but it may take you a little longer, take you shorter. But it doesn't mean that God has lost focus on you. It doesn't mean that that God is not, uh, uh, you're not a main focus in, in, to God. You, you're not a main focus for God. It's just, you have certain things that you have to do in your life. You have certain things you have to cross over. You have certain things that you just gotta do to get to that next level. So, you know, as, as P would say, just staying in your lane, it, it, it's a main staple to God's plans and the, the way he wants to prosper you. So I'm going to end with that. I just want to put that out quickly and, and give another brother the opportunity. Did what you call him, uh Okay. <laughs> okay. I just got a text. Okay. So, so, uh, can't be birthday cake today. So, uh, I'm going to jump back in, uh, and look at 1 Corinthians 12 again. I mean, God had me here and he had me highlight some different things. So verse 24. But our presentable parts have no need, but God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part with, which lacks it, that there should be no schisms in the body. But the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member, all members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So when I look at that, I, I understand what God has called me to do, right? I understand the office that God has, has, has called me to. And it's similar to a lot of other uh, men of God that are out here, you know, and uh, maybe on TV, maybe maybe a lot further. But what the scripture is telling me, as it pertains to each person, as it pertains to each person having a gift, God saying that. It's all composed of one body. Mm -hmm. So the same care. So 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 just a natural body, the same care that the eye gets, the heart may 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 not get. Right. So they're specialists for each part of the body. I can't go to. So when I go to my doctor and do a checkup, she'll she'll say, OK, this is this and this is that. Right. She'll say you need to go see this type of doctor. All right, there's, they're specialists, and that's what I believe the scripture is talking about. There's a specialist for your unique gift. Just because we're all in the same body doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we're going the same way. And I think we already, we already, we already, we already nail home that point. But even, even with that being said, uh, everybody that's around may not be going in the same direction. We may be we may be on the same intercession, but I may have to stay on 95 a little bit longer. I may have to stay on 95 a little bit longer because if I get off on the wrong exit, then, then, you know, then I got then I got to bust a you, then I got to come on back down. But as it pertains to my gift, I can look at other people's gift and say, well, why am I not at this point? And somebody can look at my gift and say, Lord, why am I not at this point? 
Well, God said when I created this, he created it so there'd be no schism. So when one when one wins, the entire body wins. And that's, that's mm -hmm. eye opening for somebody like myself, because it's like, OK, what, what are you really saying here? You're telling me that the gift that he's given me is significant. There is no insignificant gift that God has given us. But when we come into this earth, it's kind of like, OK, you're, you're called to do this. You're called to do this. So we'll put you here. We'll put you here. Well, God doesn't work like that. It's kind of like every joint supply, every gift is needed. So everybody that's on the phone, I reiterate again, has a gift. And has a gift to be operated in. But in order to operate in that gift, in order to find out uh, what it is that you need to operate in that gift, we, we have to we have to then rely on God. Um, staying in your lane. To me, staying in my lane, it's 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 been important. Um, not everybody, not everybody prayer is for me. Uh, not everybody word that they sent out is for me. Uh, not everybody encouragement is, is for me. Mm -hmm. Um, because God has given me a specific word for the season that I'm in right now. And when he's given me a specific word for the season, I mean, I have to rely totally on him because He's the often finisher of my faith. He knows everything that I need. So if he knows everything I need, I need to be connected to him. That's like me following someone on the interstate. I can follow you. If you're flowing with God, I can follow you. But at some point, I need to tap into him so I can know what it is that he wants me to do. What interstate he wants me to, to, to ride on, where I need to set my radio to, what kind of gas I need to put in this vehicle. Right. So I can't just be out doing anything once I once I understand and that's what this call basically is saying to someone who, who who doesn't know that's what Corinthians is telling us everybody has a gift now your gift may not be as significant as somebody that you've seen but you have to operate in that and once you tap into what that is there's a lane for that gift there is a process for that gift there's a certain time all plants don't grow the same some may need light at this time some may need less light but God has that blueprint and when we sit before God and we bring God our plan, when we bring God our gift, we keep, when, first when we acknowledge that he's given us a gift, when we acknowledge that he is who he says he is, we say, God, listen, I believe that you put something in the inside of me. I can't see it with my natural eyes, but based on what your word says, I'm saved. I believe there's a gift. Show me what my gift is and show me how to operate in my gift. No matter how small it is or no matter how large it is. It's him that's going to give the increase, but it's also him that's going to tell us how to operate. And so me standing in my lane is vital to me fulfilling my purpose. Me standing in my lane is where my provision is. Me standing in my lane is where I can hear God. Me standing in my lane is where God can get the increase out of my life. So when Jesus went to the cross and died, when he died for my sin, he said, listen, when he created me, he sent me to the earth. There's a purpose for your life. I want you to fulfill that purpose. But in order for you to fulfill that purpose, you have to tap into me. I'm going to tell you who to talk to. I'm going to tell you who to marry. I'm going to tell you where to go. I'm going to tell you where to live. I'm going to tell you where to plant yourself. I'm going to tell you where to work. And in those places, that's why I want you to operate. I can't operate in that by me, as you would say, Mike, following you. If I'm following you, I want to work with you. Work. That's being convenient. And that's us not. And that's me not wanting to tap into God. That's me not wanting to sit. That's me following what the TV says or following with uh, somebody that's quote unquote a role model. All those things are good. But what we're talking about, this is this is the meat of things where it's there's a specific lane for each individual. And because I'm in a lane on the interstate, those cars are going the same way as me, but they're going to get off at a different exit. They may get off on the same exit, but at some point. It's going to differentiate where they're going versus where I'm going. And then then what? And that's what I'm talking about now. And then what? Right. So I'm going to round table with that. I think Kate doing some. Uh, my... It's all good. It's all good. Um, you hit all, as usual, all good, valid points. Uh, as you was talking about, Jesus just came in my spirit. Jesus it's like the ultimate person that stayed in his lane. He knew the day the second uh, that he was going to transition. He knew how he was going to transition. 
He knew everything that was going to happen during his 33 years, but he never got outside his lane. He, he knew what he had to go through, but he never got outside of his lane. He just stayed in his lane. He did everything he was supposed to do, everything God directed him to do. He didn't do anything without conversing with God. He stayed in his lane. So if we was made in his likeness, you know, God said, make man in our likeness. He set the example for us to, to, to stay in our lane. Not saying we're perfect. By no means am I perfect. By no means I don't think, you know, none of us claim to be perfect. But we do have a perfect example of how to stay in our lane. And that's what we should kind of model ourselves is, is just stay in our lane to, to ensure that we are doing exactly what God wants us to do uh, and directs our pet to do what we need to do to, to, to fulfill that gift, to fulfill our purpose. Not to, uh, as, as Jesus would say, let your will, not my will, Father. And, and, and that's a, a strong stay in my lane message for me. Because once I get outside my lane, I'm saying, God, I want my will to be done. I'm not worried about your will. I'm not worried about your direction. I, I'm tired traveling east. I want to go west. And, and, and for that, I have to remind myself, it's your will, Father, not mine. If I get off track, I, I, I become selfish and say, I no longer want to listen to you. I no longer want to follow your plans. I no longer want to want to, want to do what you want me to do. I want to do what I want to do. And that's when I get in trouble. I get in a traffic jam. I get in an accident. Uh, I get a speeding ticket. Whatever you want to call it, whatever analogy you want to call it or use, that, that's what happens in our life. And, and unfortunately, I'm only speaking for me. I did that before. I've been off track. Got outside my lane. want to do what I want to do. Uh, how I wanted to do it, when I wanted to do it, where I wanted to do it. Didn't work out. Had to build a flesh. And say, okay, Father, I tried it. <laughs> let me go. Let me come back to you. Forgive me. Let me repent. Uh, put me back on the potter's wheel, and, and, and let's do this all over again, Father. And we serve such a, a, a gracious Father. He allows us to, to try again. He doesn't count it against it. He said, okay, try it again. I'm gonna be right with you still. I didn't leave you when you messed up, so I'm definitely not gonna leave you now. So that's the yeah, we serve a great father because even when we, we we get out of our lane, it's not like we get out of lane. He said, "Oh, I forget about you till you come back." He's with us when we outside the lane. That's why we're able to come back because he has protected us when we outside the lane because he knows that's not what I have for you, my son. So I'm gonna be right here to protect you to you get to the right mindset to get back in your lane and. Uh, the last couple of days I've been reading, I'm, 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 everybody probably knows the, the story, but I'm going to try to put it all together. I've been reading Genesis 37 to like 45, 46, and everybody knows the story of Joseph, the son of Jacob, uh, the father gave him the coat of many colors, and brothers hated him for that moment because he was a favorite of his son. Um, you know, the brothers try to kill him. Um, they put him in the slave. He was in prison for 13 years. Uh, before he went to prison, of course, the uh, the guard's uh, wife uh, set him up, basically said he was trying to rape him. He went to prison for 13 years. We know the whole story. And when I was reading that, I thought of standing in your own lane. Out of all those dark times, brothers trying to kill you, they stole you in slavery, got set up and went to prison, uh, you know, became... Uh, uh, the rule over Egypt, I mean, a, a, as a, a Hebrew, he just went through so much darkness, he never turned his back on God. He never turned his back on God one time. He just stayed in his land throughout all those dark periods of his life. He never he never got low. He never turned his back on God. He just stayed in his land because he knew God had so much favor over his life. And that's where we have to be with me stand. God had, God favors us. He didn't say it was going to be easy. He didn't say we wouldn't go through to any trials or tribulation and promises. Hey, once you give your life to me, you'll never experience another obstacle in your life. But it's our job always praising and stay in our lane by praising him. Not praising when the blessing comes, but praising before the blessing comes. Not praising after we get out of the, 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 the God of truth. Uh, we praise him as we in it. 
we got to be in our lane as giving God praise because that's what he wants. He wants us to praise him at all times. Meditate on his word day. Those are some simple things to keep us in our lane. So staying in your lane. I, I know we say it a thousand times, but it's so many ways we can stay in our lane. But the main way is main focus on God and what God has for you. It's going to help you stay in your lane. Uh, not worrying about what Brother Pierce got or how Brother Pierce pay or, or how Brother Kevin does it. It's going to be different for me. They made me different. He said he made me a masterpiece. So I mean, I'm going to be different than each brother on this line. Not me. I'm better. I'm just different because I'm my own masterpiece. And that's my kind. I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm better than no brother here uh, or any brother out there. But I know I'm different because God tells me so. I'm a raw priesthood. I'm a, I'm a masterpiece. I, you know, can't be duplicated. And in a simple term, we all got our own DNA, fingerprints, and dental records. So that tells you, be the best person you can be. Because being somebody else is already taken. I'm going to go ahead and with that. I thank Kay. Kay, back. Get back, Rev. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, and I thank y'all for being patient with me. You know you're eating birthday cake um, today, man. You know my babies, they, they they want daddy. You know how that goes. Um, very important, man. That I want to read something. Because I was meditating, especially when, when, when you're talking about staying in in your lane. And uh, this morning I was I was reading, I was meditating on what Isaiah says in uh, chapter six. They said at the sound of their voice, the doorposts and the theirs old shook, the temple was filled with smoke. And he said, woe to me, I cried. I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And then one of the serpents flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongue from the altar, which is which it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Hallelujah. Hey, before, when, you, before, you get start, before you get start, Kevin, if uh, everybody can check your lines, I think somebody is off mute. I appreciate it. Thank you. Go ahead, Kay. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right there, Jeremiah, me, Isaiah, was in the midst and in, in the presence of the Lord. And that light that and that glory was shining upon him that he had to recognize through the light and the glory of the Lord his own sins, his own fault, that he was unclean, he was around things that unclean. He knew he wasn't in his lane. So when hallelujah, the cold touched his lips, then it said, What it? He touched my lips, he touched my mouth and said. Steve, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sins atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, here I am. I said, I said that, that right there, here I am, Lord. See, I, I got tired. I got tired of living the life that I was living that, 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 that was right there in darkness. But when I came upon the light, when I said, Lord, oh, hallelujah, what must I do? 
He said, feed yourself with the word and starve down the devil. It wasn't, this This is a lane that we're talking about now. Son, I need you to get in this lane right here. This is a lane that I have for you. Now, I'm going to show you who you are. Can you hear me? I'm going to show you who you are. I'm going to show you, hallelujah, that you are original masterpiece created by the master by his hand. But I need you to trust. I need you to I need you to get into this car. Hallelujah. And I need you to turn that key, that ignition. I need you to turn that switch. I need you to turn it on. Now, 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 now. In, in, in that glove department is a manual book. And I need you, hallelujah. If them check light engines come on, I need you to check this manual book, but I need you to drive. I need you to, I, I'm going to guide you. I need you to stay focused. I need you to stay focused on this road. I need you because there's going to be other cars coming your way. You don't know what's going to be driving your way. But I got you. I need you to stay in your lane. I need you to focus on the, the hallelujah, the purpose and the direction that I need you to go. Because what you're doing, especially the greatness that's inside of you, son, you're going to help others. Cause this is not about you. See, we're about we 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 gotta we gotta be real focused and keen into what the Lord sent because He wanted to spread His kingdom. We are mighty men of God. We are we are real blessed. We are strong. We are of His likeness, His image. So we got His nature and His characteristic. But how do how are we gonna know that? I can't get in the lane of peace. God got something for Pete that, that, that's extraordinary that's not for me. That's not my package. I can't get in the lane of Mike. He, God got something extraordinary, something, something beautiful for Mike and for each and every man. God, but the thing is, we can rub on each other like logs. We can spark a flame. You remember last week we, we, I was talking about God placing us in the garden of Eden and he wants you to work your territory and also while you're working your territory he wants you to take care of it we also got to take care of each other being stand up men I can't get out here and do something that's that's illegal and then get on this call and try to say something that that that's going to be uh uh I'm, that I'm doing. And next thing you know, you know, that's blood on my hands. That's but that's what the enemy wants. He 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 wants you to get out your lane. How do you get out your lane? You're taking your mind off of what God got for you. You're taking your mind off your real true purpose. You taking your mind off yourself. He don't want you to know who you are. So if I don't if if if, if, if 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 you don't know who you are, then you ain't gonna know your purpose. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna know what you're designed for. You ain't gonna even know, you know what I'm saying, which lane you're you gonna jump in each and every lane. And then you're gonna try to bogart the next man lane. That's all I gotta say for right now. You went off. So, Mike, uh, did you say about the open dialogue? We got open dialogue, so anybody yeah. can chime in at, 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 at any time. Um, it's not uh, it's not uh, for people that's first time. Everybody else knows, um, you know, it's open dialogue. But Kev said something that was uh, that was vital, and, and it made my spirit leap when he said, uh, "Did the directions that you have, the directions and the blueprint that you have." But when you said directions as it pertains to a car, like when I get in there, I set my GPS. You set your GPS in the natural the same way you set your GPS in the spirit. Like when I get up, it's okay, Lord, order my steps. You show me and you tell me where you want me to go. And as I'm operating in that, he tell me who he want me to speak to. He tell me who he wants who he wants to send these invites to. He tells me when he touches my heart to be sensitive to people, to pray. All these different things that are like you said, uh, are in my lane. But if I'm not in my lane, those are things that he missed. He's tapping on something else when it talks about, when you, when you talked about God's kingdom. 
and when you talked about um, inspiring it and, and helping others, you know, when God tells you to do something, that's a part of the directions. But I can't get those directions if I'm out of order. I can't get those directions if I'm somewhere that he didn't tell me to be. I can't get those directions if I'm doing something that he didn't call me to do. And it's the same thing. Like you say, when you reference uh, Genesis, you go back to Genesis. Uh, they were out of order. You, you were in a place that I told you not to go to. Um, so there were there were repercussions behind that. You know, that's why Jesus had to come. But in that lane, it's it's it's. I say again, for me, in that lane has been provision. In that lane has been provision, meaning God will take you out of a season where you're like, okay, how am I going to do this? How am I going to pay for this? How am I going to take care of this? And as a man with a family, that can be weight on you. But when God gives you strategic um, instructions on how to move, that's him stepping in. That's him saying, I've heard your prayers. And I know where you are, but there lies again. I'm going to give you a specific set of instructions that you have to follow. And if you don't follow those instructions, then <clears throat> this, is, this is this is this is where you stay. Um, I've seen that me staying in my lane, not not perfect, like you said, Mike. And there's times I got out of my lane, but the times I stayed in my lane, I've seen this provision. I've seen uh, prayers answered because what happens is. Uh, he begins to to touch my heart in a way I pray what he wants me to pray. Uh, Jesus said, I only do what I see the father do and I only speak what I what, what the father speaks. That's being in tune. That's me be, me being in my car. That's me having my windows up and me focusing on, like you said, that horse with that blindness. That's me focusing on what's there for me. What's for me is for me. What provision God has for me. Is going to be for me if I'm if I'm if I got my window down trying to hear what song you're listening to in your car. I can't hear what God is playing for me in my car. There are sometimes when God is talking to me where He tells me to steal away. It's not a bad situation, or it's not anything going you know anything wrong with the situation or the place that I'm in. But God said just steal away because He wants to tell me something. Whether that's sow a seed into somebody, whether that's step back or whether that's don't do this with this crowd, or whether that's I'm trying to take you somewhere else. There's something I want to do with you. And there, that's, that's, that's because of the relationship. That's because I believe he says he is who he says he is. And that's because I respect him. Not perfect, but I respect him. God, what are you saying? The decisions that I make, I was looking at John 15 and the Holy Spirit taking me back there. It says, and I'm just going to reference it, my phone is locked. It says, with him, I can do, I can do, hold on, well, I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up. John 15. Uh, John 15 and four. Abide in me as I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. In the vine, I'm sorry. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I was basically telling us, I, you can't do anything outside of these instructions, but turn your wheels. And turn your wheels and turn your wheels. So when I when I'm tapped in, when I'm listening to what he's saying, that's everything I need. That's everything I need. Everything I need is connected to him. And if I believe him for everything, he's telling me each and every day. Me and Kev was talking in, in, in the, uh, about the importance on that fresh manna being every day. Like this is not one thing God was talking to me about today. This is not a a hurry up. This is this is this is a slow process based on. What God called me to do is like, OK, I called you to do this thing, but you can't get there without me. And what that means is every day you're going to have to seek me. You're going to have to seek me when you're going through challenges, but you're also going to have to seek me to know which way to go. Because just like everything else in the world, God shifts and he moves and you miss one sign. You're on a road that you shouldn't be on. You miss you run one, one red light and now you're out of order. That's an accident. You, you That's a T-bone. Now you can we can't blame God because God is saying I'm consistently giving you instructions. I'm consistently giving you directions. I'm consistently giving updates like my phone updates every night. I'm con uh, or, or, or whenever the update. I'm continuing to give you updates, to give you information. So it's never me. It's always your flesh when you want to move. Either you want to get there quicker or you want to slow something down. And when you're operating in the Holy Spirit, it's kind of like you. I, I can't slow down. Oh, I can't speed it up for you. This has already been set in motion. So you just got to get in your car. Like Kev said, start it up, 
and listen for the instructions. And with us in this flesh, it's hard to listen for those instructions because I want to get going because I seen two or three cars pass me. Now I need to speed up or everybody else is slowing down. Let me just slow down. Instead of tapping into the spirit, what are you saying, God? Are you saying slow down? Or are you saying go forward? I know when the recession came, a lot of people jumped out there and made money. So if you follow everybody else or I follow the news, the news say hold back. You know, what? what is God saying to me um, helps me to stay in that lane. And me seeing him, the Bible said, oh, taste and see by me being able to see him continually providing, continually to give me a word in season and out of season has helped me to rely on him and has kept me from many stops and many roadblocks uh, along the way. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Um, as you, uh, P and K was talking uh, and ministered, I apologize. Um, something hit my spirit that, uh, and I'm gonna try to put it out uh, the best way I can. Each one of us on this call, God has assigned some individuals that you have to meet in your life. If you get outside your lane, those individuals get outside their lane. We are, we may not know the individuals, but God has assigned somebody like uh, 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 to me, to Kevin, to Pastor, to Jamie, to to. to to Baz, to Javon, to, to Austin, to Peter, to Carlos, to Mark, to Eric, to Lamont, uh, 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 to Miguel. God, God has assigned specific individuals for each one of us that they're looking at you. Not as though you're a God, but they're assigned to you. you you're like a distribution center. If you get at your lane, they're going to get outside their lane. Uh, if, I, if I'm in P lane, those individuals in P lane, they're designed to hear his voice. He and I can say the exact same words. But they, when I say it, it's like falling on deaf ears. When P, P says it, it's like an epiphany. Oh, man, that's some good information. But I said the exact same thing five minutes ago. But because they're not assigned to me, they don't, they don't receive what, I, what I'm saying because God says, you're assigned to P. And, and when he releases that information, it releases them to another arena in the spirit. And when I, what I'm trying to say is that it's, it's like being in a, on a dark road, the light inside of us is going to shine so the people behind us can see where they're going. That, 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 holy, thank you, hallelujah. Jesus lives in us, and that light we have in us is going to illuminate the darkness for the people behind us. If we don't illuminate our light, we're going to lose some people behind us. Whether it's our family, our wives, our children, our brothers, our sisters, our brothers on this call, we have to be that light, just like a lighthouse, to help guide those ships into safety. That's staying in our lane. Not being ashamed of our light, not being ashamed of uh, gospel. Uh, uh, when we get around certain people, man, let me turn my light off. No, no, no. That's when your light should be at the brightest. Man, I, my light, your light has to be on and bright all the time. It's like being in a dark room. Uh, uh, let me back up. It's like shining a flashlight during daylight. You don't really see, but you get in a dark room and shine that flashlight. Everything lights up. That's us. We are to bring light to darkness and not being ashamed to being in our lane. Not being ashamed to say, I'm in the lane of serving Jesus Christ. If you like it, follow. If you don't like it, don't follow. Doesn't mean you're a bad person, but I'm here to pick up the ones that want to follow right now. Why? Because I have an assignment. I have an assignment to pick up those that want to follow. Jesus Christ. I'm not going to turn my back to anybody, but I can't force you either. I can't, I can't grab you by the shirt and drag you. I have to do my assignment, and that's to help individuals understand Jesus Christ and what it means 
to have Jesus in your life. It's not a selfish thing. If, if you won't be selfish with this thing, this, this is not the walk. Being a servant of Jesus is being unselfish, willing to be a part of the body of Christ, being able to help those that, that are lost. Because we all, I think, I, I want to say that, but I think we were all at one time maybe lost. <laughs> and, and somebody, Jesus Christ, help us become those that, that are found. So just, just understanding that we are the light. And, and you may not think nobody's watching. You may not think you have somebody assigned to you, but you best believe. And I'm not just talking about your immediate family, your children, your wife. I'm talking about people. If you're a teacher, there's some kids out there that's watching that are assigned to you that it's your job to take them from that point A to point B, take them out of that darkness. If you work with kids in a school, uh, an athletic side, or you just surrounded by young people, there's some people watching. We, we, we have to make sure that we, we don't mess up the assignment by getting outside our lane because it not only costs us, it can cost other individuals that need us to show them the way and show them the light. Hallelujah. I end with that. And once again, by the way, I apologize. This is not a, a monologue. It is a dialogue. So if other brothers have something to chime in on, please do. I know Pastor and, and the regular Pastor and, and Brother Larry and, and those that normally on the call know you can chime in. But for the new ones, if you have any, any word, please, please release it. Um, good evening, I don't got a word. Go ahead, sir. I was saying, I, I, I don't got a word, but that was a good point you brought up. Um, some parents on the form, and I was like, do you meet people by chance? And I like, how does that work? I was thinking about a couple of days ago, and you just confirmed this, saying, you know, some people you like you meet, this is not a chance. You meet people that are assigned to you. So um, it just kind of confirmed something that was in my spirit. So thank you for that. That was a good point. Hey. Amen, sir. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for chiming in. Go ahead. Uh, I think Brother Larry. Yes, sir. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, I discussed with Brother Pierce earlier, Dr. Burvine. I wasn't going to say anything this evening because I was having some challenges. But uh, you can't deny your calling. <laughs> if God puts something on you, you got to do what he tells you to do. On uh, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Verse six through nine, the Bible says, uh, I planted a seed, the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has, it, God has began making it to grow. So neither one who's plant nor who waters anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plant and the one who waters have one purpose and they eat and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. So we are co-workers in God's service and God's field, God's building. Sometimes in, in ministry, in life, we have the habit of looking across the fence at the other yard and thinking that the grass is greener over there because we see more uh, produce coming from over there. We see more uh, production. We see more, more, more growth over there in that yard. We, we feel like that person is further ahead. So we want to compete with them. And that's in the nature of man. Man has a nature naturally that, especially men, we have a natural nature that we want to compete. We want to jump up. Uh, that's why we are so attracted to sports because we like to compete. Uh, the disciples, even after Christ left, had an issue with that. Uh, this is why the apostles are saying, Apollo comes to water and I came to plant a seed because sometimes we look over in the other yard and say, that grass is greener. That call for God is more attractive. That purpose for God is more attractive. More people are seeing this person than, uh, than, than they're seeing me. They're making more, they have more wealth over there than I have over here. They have more prosperity over there than I have over here. They have more health. And sometimes we jump the gun and we jump the fence because we think something is greener over there. We have to remember God called you with a purpose. We are the body of Christ. Each individual part of the body of Christ serves its purpose. Could you imagine if your lungs tried to be your heart, if your eyes tried to be your nose, if your ears tried to be your mouth? There would be absolute confusion in your body. And sometimes we suffer that in the body of Christ because we have humanistic instincts 
that tell us to compete, that tell us you can do better than that person did. They say it this, but you can say better. You can, you, can, you can add something to this that will make what they said deeper or better. Sometimes we have to learn how to allow the spirit of God to govern us, not just our mouths, but our, every, every part of our being so that we don't find ourselves across the track in another yard because we thought the grass was greener and then come to find out that that wasn't where you belong. Sometimes, especially with this social media stuff, it's so distracting because you look at social media and this person looks prosperous. And you say, well, they're prospering God, so I should be prospering too. I should be in that lane too. I, let me go over here and try this. And God is saying, stay where you are. I've given you direct instructions to stay where you are. Follow the course that I've set before you and you will find success. Stop looking in the yard next to you. Stop looking at your neighbor and comparing. Focus on what God has called you to do and do it. I'm done. Praise God, brother. I'm glad you chimed in. Hey, hey, fellas, I, I hope y'all can hear me. It's a little noisy out here. Um, but I, I just, I'm going to keep it quick. Um, you know, I, I met this guy, um, and this just happened this morning. Um, this fella, um, he he's a believer. Went, um, He said uh, 30-some years he was an addict, um, and he was he comes from about where we're from. And he's down here in the tropics now and he's working and he said, God sent him down here and he wants to be working for this place, but he's working at this resort where we're at. And we were talking this morning, y'all talking about staying in your lane. And I told him a story, you know, the Bible says, um, you know, when, when I was a child, I did as a child. And when I was a man, I did as a man, I did manly things. And I thought about it, you know, I had this guy tell me one time, I used to go to work and I would go to work and I felt like I had cinder blocks on my feet and I hated that job, man. I hated that job. I didn't want to go to work. Didn't want to get out of my car. Didn't want to be there. And this man pulled me aside one time, a godly man. And he told me, he said, son, he said, you are at this position for a reason. He said, you are here for a purpose. He said, and just like my brother just said, he said, you are, you know, not to look in somebody else's yard and say, oh, man, I wish my bushes looked like that. I wish my yard had the stripes like that. You know, I wish my house had that kind of siding. You know, I wish I had a Corvette like that, you know. And, you know, the man told me this morning, he said, I live in a halfway house now. He said, I drive a scooter. And he said, I'm happy as can be. And he said, and he gave me all this stuff. He said, I'll be here tomorrow if y'all need help. And I was reading KP's message this morning. And at the very bottom of it, it had a, a, a nice finish to it. And I, and, and the, what I read was a message that I'm going to give him tomorrow about this guy was doing all the things. And I said, you know something? God put you here and maybe not at the other job that you want to work. And I think about it sometimes, maybe we work the jobs because sometimes I'm not happy in the job that I'm doing. And like uh, Pierce said, you know, staying in that lane, you know, sometimes I've had people all oh, leave the church that you're at and go preach at a different church. But I'm like, you know, God put me at that church. You know, it's a little itty bitty church. It don't have very many people. And, and people gripe about, oh, there's not many people here. There's not many people. We got to do something. We got to do something. And I said, stay steadfast. It's like when God said, preach. I mean, when he said, pray, he said, pray like the heavens don't hear. He said, praise God and pray without ceasing. He said, it's just like, and do that. When we stay in our lane and man, maybe it, it don't feel good sometimes to be in that spot. But but keep being in that spot because God puts you there for a reason. And so I learned from that guy telling me that he said, you know, sometimes it's going to feel like you got center blocks on your feet, but you got a purpose in being there. And in being there, do God's work, do the best job that you can do, even if it's a situation that you don't like, let people see God in you. And, you know, when I see that guy tomorrow, I'm going to say, you know, some Every time you've opened the door for me, you've been nice and courteous. You've said, had a blessed day and all those things. 
I said, maybe that's God's purpose in you because people that are coming in and out of this resort, maybe those people don't even know who Jesus is and they're seeing Jesus every time they see you. Amen. Amen. Good word, sir. I, I want to say something. I want to say something real quick to, I'm sorry, brother Larry, to, to your last comment. And it was so profound. So I, I'll come back. I apologize again. When you say looking across, basically you're fencing somebody else's yard. It hit me because I got a neighbor and, and, and I thought I loved my yard. So I'm going to use the yard thing. So I went and talked to him. And when he told me what he did in his yard, I was like, man, I'm not doing all that. The reason I'm saying it is when you're looking at somebody else's yard, you have to look at the work they're doing. Don't just look at the results. You got to be willing to do the work they do to get the results they got. And the results he had, I wasn't willing to do that. I'm like, you seed your own loan, you overseed it, you, you, you spray for the weeds. He actually cuts his yard with an old fashioned lawnmower and a regular lawnmower on the same day. I said, brother, I'm going with my yard. I love your yard. I pass by and just look at it. But I wasn't willing to do the work he was doing to get the results. And that's the thing I wanted to say, Brother Larry, was so profound. When you look across somebody else's fence, you got to say, I see the results. But do I want to do that work to get what they got? And a lot of times we don't want to do the work they do. You know, pastor may get up and, and, and pray for an hour, hour and a half. Brother Larry may pray for an hour, hour and a half. If you want what they have, you got to be willing to do what they do. You just can't do half of what they do and expect to get what they got. That's not going to happen. So I just wanted to say that. That was that was profound. And, and also what Pastor was saying. So I just want to elaborate on that. I apologize. No need to apologize, brother. I love it. I love it. Um, I want to I wanna say this. God put this on my heart just now, just fresh off the presses. I, and I'm not accustomed to doing this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it because he's saying it to me. Um, I'm a I'm gonna tell a parable that he just told me, and it's a, and for those of you that don't understand what a parable is, a parable is just a story. Uh, he showed me in my mind uh, two brothers that were raised on a farm. Their father was a farmer, and one of the brothers said, "I'm not gonna be scooping up poop for the rest of my life." I'm, I'm not doing this. And so that brother goes off and becomes an executive. The other brother stays behind and continues to help the father. But he gets to looking at the brother who is now wearing suits and driving fancy cars and living in a nice home and working an easy li living an easy life. He looks at his brother and says, I'm going over there. If my brother could do it, I can do it too. I don't have to sweep up behind cows and pigs and sheep for the rest of my life. I can do what my brother's doing. I can push paper. And he goes over and he becomes an executive like his brother and they both become millionaires. But the part of the story that God dropped in my spirit that, that really got me was God said if he would have stayed with his father, the other brother that decided to run over and join his brother in the executive field, and become a millionaire, but if he had stayed with his, with his father and continued to work that farm, the purpose for his life was God wanted to turn that farm into a, a, a major business that would have produced billions of dollars. But he missed the billions and got millions because he was chasing somebody else's purpose. And many times, even if you jump over there in the other yard, and it works, what are you missing? That's the question. What are you missing? What are you forsaking? What are you forfeiting by following somebody else's vision and forsaking what God called you to do? And I'm done. Hallelujah. That's a good word. Can I say some? Yes, sir, Miguel. Where you been? <laughs> I've been great. I've been great. Um, I'm not home yet. Uh, I'm still in the car. So I was like, if I would drive, I would lose the lose the meeting. So I decided to stay where I am now. So I've been here. No, you can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been here. Everyone talk, and um, it's 
seems like what everyone was saying was was relating to part of my life. Um, and I was like, that, that. I'm, I'm glad I was able to do and pay attention and listen to everything. Uh, I have a little story about my life and then and my so much before we talking today about staying in your line and listen to God what God has for you. And if you listen to God what is yours at the end of the line, your gift will be given. So um when I did graduate from school, uh, I went for school for mechatronics and I have it was me and a couple of friends and among all of us I was the one Did we lose Miguel? I think so. I think, I think, it, uh, I think we lost you, Miguel. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it kicked me out for a second. Um, yeah, I was saying, like, um, when I got done with school and uh, it was me and a few friends and we graduated and I went for mechatronics. Um, and among us, I was the one who had the love for the engineering. So, and when it comes to find job, all of my friends, they got like engineer jobs, you know, great jobs. And God, God, how? Like, I love I think he dropped off again. P, you want to you wanna chime in until he, till he come through? Yeah, Miguel's struggling. I hate you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Now I'm not, I'm not Let me, I'm going out and in. So um, I moved to Ohio and they moved to Washington, D.C. and Maryland. I was asking God, God, how? Like, I love engineer and I'm getting a technician job. I was not able to get a job nowhere else. I was trying everywhere. And I wasn't, I wasn't in Ohio and I was like, God. I will do what I can, no matter where I am, I will give my best. And if I have to leave this place one day, I will live with a good reputation. And three months later, a few months later, a friend of mine calls me and says, hey, Carlos, um, I have an opening at my, my job. And if you want, I can, you know, put your names in and do everything for you. And my mind was like, that's a job that I want. That's a job that I'm looking for. And something told me, hey, don't move. Stay where you at. It's not what you want, but stay where you at. And that was for, for days. And every time something was going to happen, my heart used to pop in a lot. Like, and I was like, what is going on? A good opportunity come out and my heart is like popping every day, like with concerns. And I'm international and I have a student visa. And in a way for me to renew my work permit, I have to be associated with certain companies that have some profiles. And I didn't have that information at that time. So it got time for me to renew my, my work permits. And I went to apply and I got a letter. And they told me, hey, Carlos, we cannot accept your, your application because it's missing information. And I went to look for the information everywhere throughout the company and everything, and I was not able to find information. I was a few days left and I was battling everyone, everyone, and till they were able to give me the information. And I, I did apply and they accepted. And I called my friend that was going to give me the chance to join him. And I asked him, man, I just sent you my work permit and they asked me for those information. Do, does your company has that information? And it came to me that they didn't have that information. They don't have, they don't, they don't cover that information <laughs> that they were asking me. And after that point, I was like, now I understand why I had to get that job that I was not willing to go, that I was like, God damn, that's not the job that I want. Now I understand why my heart was popping when the chance for me to move to another job came in and I was wow wow and it doesn't stop there I did renew my work permits and months later 
my, my friend came back again and he told me, hey, Carlos, uh, we have another opening at my job. If you want, I can put the word again. And one more time, my heart started popping like, and it's telling me, stay there, stay there, stay there. You know, stay loyal to, to, to those who, who gave you your first chance, to loyal to those who did help you when you need. And at that time, my, my supervisor got fired. I was like, why would I stay here? My supervisor would go fire someone that used to appreciate me, someone that used to, you know, let me know when things are going well, when they're going bad. Why don't I, I move with uh, my friend and so he can show me around. And, and my friend, he's in the same process uh, as me. He was trying to get, um, to get his situation straight, but in a different way. And he was like, come, come. They may be able to help you instead of you be there and you, your work firm. They may be able to straight to you with like, by give you a, a green card or something like that. And I was like, okay, I may move. But some part of me was telling me, stay where you at again. So was telling me where you at. Um, my, a few months later, the road after my, 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 uh, my friend did call me, and he told me, hey, man, my company is about to fire me. They are, they are firing people due to the situation. And I'm one of those people that I'm letting, letting go. To. And I did ask him, man, you are a good employer. Why didn't let it go? He said, no. Literally, they are letting go the last 20 people that they hire. So I would be one of those persons that would get fired. And... And down the line, I got a call from my ex-supervisor. He said, hey, Carlos, I moved to Virginia. I got a new job. There's this position opening. And if you want to, I'll put the word. And guess what? At that time, my heart was telling me, go, go, and go. And I did call my lady at that point, or not that point, like the same lady I have today. And I said, hey. I got this proposal and I want to go. And she told me, man, if that's for the good of you and for the good for everything around your life, go. And when I moved to Virginia, I had a few months left to renew my work permit and to renew my also my visa. And when my friend, one of the points, my when my friend called me called me to go with him to Maryland they say the company will help me and he ended up getting fired and when I moved to Virginia the company that hired me they were able to help me with the whole process and everything and when you guys were telling hey about staying in your line and uh, don't compare yourself and like listen to God and don't get out of your way and things gonna get right if you stay on the way. I just, I, I was like, they are revealing my story right now. They are reading part of my book. Like, and I'm not big being paid. And I, was, and I was like, let me share to them like how it works by staying in your line, how, how it works by listening to what God has for you but it works by not putting yourself in a position where you compare what people are or what people have. Yes, I end up by being a technician, by having a job that made myself question my, my abilities. Yes, my friends, they have a, a better start. They have like everything. Me, I didn't have to struggle to look for a second job because I got fired. My friends, and things like that. It's, it's just the thing like, hey, how things some start some ways, how things start sometimes will not determine the end. It will not determine how things get done in your life. You can accomplish things in your life by having a different path for your neighbor. As Mr. Mike said, like his neighbor has a good, a good, a good garden, has a good yard. But it doesn't mean that his, the, the yard and the garden that he has is, is not making him happy. It doesn't mean that the yard that he has is not what he was trying to accomplish. 
you know, sometimes what you have, what you want to accomplish, and sometimes what your neighbor have to accomplish are different. Your neighbor's happiness is not your neighbor's happiness. What makes your neighbor happy is not what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. So you gotta understand why people go different path. So mm -hmm. you cannot expect, like I would say in in another way, um, it's just an analogy. You cannot expect to to get drunk by drinking two beers when your friend already drunk ten. You know. <laughs> Of course, he will be drunk and you won't be. So it is, and sometimes when you you drink something, one beer makes you happy. What makes him happy is 10. But you, you already know when he drinks 10, how he acts, and when you drink two, how you act. So sometimes it's, you got to understand what makes you happy and what makes you feel like, hey, fulfill is not what the, the, the person next to you feels happy and what makes him feel fulfilled all right amen that's it guys thank you thank you brother carlos and, and by the way man my yard look good man you made it seem like my yard look bad <laughs> my yard look good i just don't want it to look that good <laughs> uh hey uh, uh, <laughs> i want to yeah go ahead i want to i want to jump in there with um with brother pierce he was talking about um uh, setting the GPS in his car. Mm. Um, I don't know how everybody's is, but the one that I've got, it won't let you. It won't let you do anything if you're already moving. Yes, you got to be. You got to be stopped still before you can set that GPS. And maybe that's why the seventh day is a day of rest. You got to stop. You got to listen, hear the word, to know what your next direction is going to be. So you can set that GPS and follow it. That's good. That's good, brother Jamie. I like that. Yeah, that's absolutely a good good word. Pete, it's eight sixteen p.m. I'm gonna turn it back over to you before we do what we need to do. Everybody good? Everybody then said what they needed to say. Um. Larry said something, man, that 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 pricked me. He said something um, about the two sons and the billions and the millions. And he asked, what's the cost? Well, God already mm -hmm. answered that cause. He said, what profits a man that gain the whole world and lose his soul? Right. You never tapped in. And then another scripture is coming to my mind where they all came to Jesus. Have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not done this? Have we not done this? They said, depart from me. I never knew you. Mm -hmm. you knew about me hallelujah okay I said you knew about me from sitting on calls you knew about me from sitting in church you knew about me from what Mike said or the devotions that Kevin sent out there right but you don't know me hallelujah because you don't know Christ you don't know where you're going mm. there's a lot of fake there's a lot of a, a funk we can fake right we can act like we know we got we, we got it going on. We can act like we know where we're supposed to be going. But if we can't hear the voice of God, man, you in somebody's way when you get on the interstate. I hate for somebody to be in my way, man, when I'm on the interstate. I'm not an aggressive driver. But if you're on the interstate and you don't know where you're going, like Brother James, man, pull over, reroute yourself, find out where you're supposed to be going. And God knows as men tap into somebody that can show you how to tap into Christ. First, you got to have a relationship with him. And then as we're looking at our lives, it's an ING with this, like it's a continuation. Christ is continually working on us. This is a continual work. This is never finished. The level that that man God is on, it can get better. Where Miguel is working at, it can get better. God is always in the ING business until we leave this place. So it's always a work in progress. But the thing is with Christ, number one, he can't give us everything because we can't contain it. We couldn't contain all the information he wants to give us in our lifetime. 
So it's an everyday walk. It's an everyday, like Brother James, it's, it's an everyday rerouting on that GPS. It's always, Christ, what are you doing now? What do you need me to do now? Who do you need me to speak to now? Which way do you want me to go now? How much do you want me to sow now? What type of event do you? It's always something that's, that, that he's doing, and it's always the moving of his Holy Spirit. But I backtrack mm -hmm. and say again, he's not finished yet with each in, any one of us, but we got to know where we're going. And at this point in my life, I could, I could not afford to not hear his voice, not understand what his voice is, not know where he's telling me to go, not feel his peace. Then sometimes you can wake up at two in the morning and hear his voice. Then sometimes you can wake up at four and hear his voice because he's there. He knows you. You know him. I, I go back. Hey, man, have we not? I sat on calls. I, I, I went to church. I, I prayed mm -hmm. for the sick and it, you never knew me. You never tapped in. You mm -hmm. never went to that place where you understood God's voice and understood God's purpose and then mm -hmm. understood, understood God's gifts. It's so much more to this God that we serve than just obtaining. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll give you those things. He'll give you the desires of your heart, which is his heart. He'll give us all these accolades. He'll give us all these different things, but we can't let it, let it be just banners on our flesh where we walk around with those things on it's like hey look at me no it's look at him look at what he's doing mike you were saying something and i'm always reminded that there's a grace behind everything that somebody's doing there's a grace and we both know bishop robson bishop robson said you you i you couldn't walk a day in my shoes and people will look at that in the natural and say man i can do anything that you can do i can put my pants on just no you can't no, you can't. You don't understand the warfare. You don't understand the praying. You don't understand the the financial responsibility, the obligations of a shepherd. You don't understand that. And we don't understand that magnitude. But I want what you want because I see your lane looks prosperous. No, there is a grace there. That lane in that lane, God said cars can go 75 in your lane. God said cars can go 65 because the traction, because of whatever he says, because he said it should be enough. We don't have to figure out why he say, do what he say, dude. Okay, Lord, you say 65, that's it. I can look at you going 75, but because I respect you, not my will, let your will be done. Because I respect you, I'm going to stay right here. But when you look over there, there's a certain type of tire you got to have. There's a certain type of grace that you got to have on your life. You get over there, that's you, you're going to hurt yourself and hurt somebody else. And when we're talking about a God we're talking about a God that said this person begot this person and this person begot this person and this person begot this person. That's probably one of the boringest things I've ever read in the Bible, but God is a legacy God. I'm trying to get something through you to them, through you to them, but you got to follow instructions. My life is connected to more than just me. And if I don't follow my instructions, I'm listening to somebody's instruction. I get to the end and say, Lord, what happened? You ain't where I told you to be. Your ties wasn't fit for this. You need off-road tires for this. Mm -hmm. That my provision, my instructions, everything that Christ has for me is right here. But that's connected to me knowing his voice. That's connected to me getting in my lane, no matter how fast or how slow it is, no matter how productive it is or unproductive it is. I say, Lord, I want to be where you want me to be. Is that easy? No, because like my brother said, like Larry said, this flesh always wants to compete and it wants to do this and wants to do this. Like Miguel said, many applications come by. I think I said on the other call, many headhunters reach out to you, many recruiters. I try to leave my job multiple times. But when God says sit still, that's where his provision is. I'm providing for you what you can handle. I'm moving you as I want to move you. I'm putting you around people that I want to put you around. It ain't about what you want. This life is about a lot of dying. A lot of brothers don't want to die. It's about a lot of dying and a lot of sacrifice. But that's what Christ did. Christ said, I sacrifice. Can't you sacrifice? Can't you stay in my lane? These are the blessings. This is the provision. This is what I provided for you. This is where you're going to enter into. But until then, you got to follow instructions. And if you don't want to follow instructions, then don't cry out. Hallelujah. I see you, Kay. I, I'm going to let you, uh, I'm gonna mm -hmm. let you end the day. No, 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 I just want to. I just want to say real quick that okay. um, I want to go back to. Uh, there's two things I want to read. Um, but I want to go back to what I was saying about Isaiah, when he acknowledged his um, 
his unworthiness in the light of the Lord. And, um, you know, he, he knew his gift and he knew, you know what I'm saying? In that moment, you know what I'm saying? He was placing himself at the mercy of God. And, you know, and, and Isaiah, what, one thing that he did, he confessed his sins and the sins of the people. And, and after that, you know what I'm saying? You know, which God touched him and cleansed him. So he, he recognized being in that light, that light, what that light can do. And he got cleansed. But what I want to read right here, hallelujah, coming out of Romans chapter 12. And I'm going to start right here at um, verse 9. It said, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Faithful in prayer. Hallelujah. Share with God people who are in need. Practice hosp hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Not be proud, but be willing to associate with people on low positions. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. And doing this, you will heat burning coals on his head. Do not overcome evil, but overcome evil with good. In doing this, you will heat burning coals on his head. And this, is, this ain't something that's going to burn him. That's going to that's gonna scar him and this and that. It was the same position Isaiah was when he was in the light. And in the presence of God. Hallelujah. I just want to share that. Praise God. All right. Praise God. No, no, no. Mike, my, my, um, oh, wait. Do, do we have anything for for? Anybody need prayer on the prayer list that we could put on the prayer list? Yes, sir. I was just about to hit that point right quick. Uh, as Kevin said, uh, anybody, anybody, don't be uh, ashamed if you need prayer. Uh, we on the line. Let's put it out there. Let's get together and uh, in prayer and, and 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 support each other in prayer. And let's get that thing out. Uh, we don't, it's not a place to be ashamed. It's not a place to, to, to have pride, egos. Uh, we're here to, to pray with each other, support each other. We're not going to rush. We won't, we won't sit by anybody. Can I just pray for angels? Say it again, sir. I'm sorry. Prayer for Prayer anger. anger. Okay, okay. Praise God. Um, sure. Anybody else? All right, all right. All I, all I want to say is that I just want, I don't know who it's for, it could be for somebody on the call or somebody you know. Uh, no matter what you're going through, just stay encouraged. Just stay encouraged. God hasn't forgotten about you. Uh, I, I don't care how it looks. Uh, through the human eye, I, I, I like to use uh, Bishop Robertson's word. You know, don't don't see with your eyes; see through your eyes. Because God is not finished with you, no matter you know the situation or how how dim it can be looking, or how dark it is. Stay encouraged, because what the enemy want to do, he want to break your courage. He want to break you down so you lose hope. And as we all know, once you lose hope, you in trouble. You you in deep trouble. So stay encouraged. Uh, if you got a brother on this line, uh, on this Zoom call number, and you need to talk to somebody, reach out. Don't be so proud that you don't reach out to a brother and, 
and say, hey, man, I just need to talk, man. Uh, you got a minute? Uh, if you don't have a minute right then, you know, call back. And, and let, let, let's make sure we get each brother to the finish line because it does no good for me to get to the top and I'm all alone. Uh, I, I want to reach back and, and, and grab a brother and help a brother get to the top so he can help another brother get to the top so we can all enjoy the top. We, we know what the bottom looks like, but let's all get to the top and, and see what that, enjoy, what, what that looks like together. Hallelujah. I see uh, one last thing, Pastor Devin. Your form look good because I was like, man, you got some palm trees on the form. I seen that. Now you're looking all relaxed. I'm like, dang, I, you should have let me know you was going somewhere. <laughs> Chilling, man. Relaxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look, that's what I'm, that's where we're supposed to look. Full of peace. Relaxing. Had to, had to get away, man. <laughs> Praise God. Enjoy yourself, sir. Enjoy yeah. yourself. Hallelujah. I'll, t I'll take some prayers that we get back nice and nice and easy next week. Yes, sir. We got you covered. And while you're there, enjoy the peace and enjoy Thank God. You. Yes, Thank sir. You. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right, Kevin. I think it's on you, brother, for you to close out in that strong prayer. Can't put it back on me. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, so Pete, um, I got, we're going to still keep. Rally can't, you can't come with no, but you can't come with no petitions, game. You, you, <laughs> we go, you got petitions. Go, we go, we go keep rally faith and, and prayer. We're gonna keep keep Miss Lou in prayer, and we're gonna pray for anger. Hallelujah. What we, what we trust in God for. I, when I pray, man, <clears throat> and, and, and I can say it collectively, when I pray, I want to know. What we're trusting God for. Like, if people say, Amen, let, let, let's pray. I'm like, all right, what do we trust? We trust in God for complete healing. We trust in God that the doctors mm -hmm. see something, don't see something. What are we trusting God for? So if you can give for me that rally faith for rally faith and Miss Lou, it will be complete healing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And for Hallelujah. Thank you. And for Brother Larry. For the okay. anger. Okay. Okay. And and before you get started, one last thing in my spirit. P kept hitting on. He said, "Every brother have gifts." I'll, I'll, you hear me go back to Bishop Robinson. Office. Every brother out here, give God something to breathe on. Get yourself some faith project, some things that you want God to breathe on, that you want to happen in your life because. People always like to say, oh, God will provide. And I had to tell my kids that today, God is going to provide. But that don't mean stand, still sitting on your hands. You still got to be doing something. When he's going to provide, he's going to provide to wake you up every morning to go accomplish what he has for you. But he's not going to do all the work. So get yourself some faith projects. Get some things God can breathe in. That balloon, whatever you have in faith for, give him something he can breathe on. Yeah, he... he he will provide, but you got to give him something to breathe on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm but, sorry. By Pete. you saying that, brother Mike, no, 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 no. That, that's great, man. By you saying that, Mike, um, I, I want to also say this right here, that um, God told Moses, stretch out the rod. Yes. He could have, he could have part, he could have parted open the seas. He could have, God could have did all that. But he said, Moses, stretch the rod out. Praise God. So then when 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 Pharaoh army was coming and Moses was looking back, what did he tell Moses to? Stretch it out. Mm -hmm. You do it. So that's what God 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 right there. I want I'm gonna show you that I can work through you, but I need you to be in line with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get in your lane with me. Get in your lane with me. Uh, uh, another one, I know we could go on and on, but another one was. God was going to provide for David. But David had to pick them stones up. God was going to make it happen. But if David wouldn't have picked the stone up and, and, and throw the stones, wasn't nothing going to happen. We still got to do something. God is going to provide, but we got to do something. We can't sit on our hands. We got to start stepping and moving in those faith projects. We got to give them something to breathe on. Amen. 
Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And brothers, you know, even even though we go through taxes, we go through a whole lot of things, and it seems like we ain't getting nowhere. God forgive us, and He forgive us. He forgive us because He needs you. Mm-hmm. You're cool. valuable to Him. We are valuable to Him. He need us. That's the way that He worked through this earthly rim. It through us. He need a human. Hallelujah. Can I jump back in real quick because KP jumped on something that struck a nerve for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said that Moses was instructed to stretch forth the rod. Uh, the second time God told him, speak to the rock mm. uh, and the rock will bring forth water. And in his anger and frustration with his situation, he struck the rock. Yes. Which caused him to miss his promised land. Yes, sir. And I think sometimes us as men, we're dealing with situations that will make us, we're so frustrated and we're so angry and we're so tired that instead of us following the instruction of God and speaking to our rock to bring forth the water, we strike them because we're so tired and we're so angry. Mm-hmm. And if y'all could pray for that tonight, just to help that frustration and that anger where you want to strike the rock instead of speaking to it like God instructed you. Amen. Amen. That's that's good. That uh, with that, and I'm sorry, that, that was great, brother Larry. With that, with with that, hit my spirit. When you're frustrated and angry, you don't listen to instructions because you're so frustrated. So you'll misinterpret the instruction for what you want it to mean and what you want it to say, and miss out on your blessing. All right, P. All right. I, Make it happen. Let's get it. Well, I just follow. I don't make nothing happen. No, let's <laughs> lock in, baby. Let's lock in. <laughs> all, all, all I do is follow, brother. Whatever he say, say, I say. Let's lock in. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Father, for your word. Say, I am that I am. Whatever you need, <laughs> you say you are. You are that. Tell them I am who I am. Tell them I am that I am. Whatever whatever we stand in need of, you already have it. So, Father, hallelujah, we don't ask for anything. We ask for you. Because when you show up, hallelujah, you take care of everything. (laughs) Show up, God. Hallelujah. Like you and only you can do. Show up. (laughs) Show up. Glory to God. And we ask God, when you show up, show off. Hallelujah. Let the light shine, God. Let your light shine through us, Lord God. That light pierces every dark place, Lord God. Can't nothing hide. Can't nothing hide. (laughs) Can't nothing hide, Lord God. Can't nothing hide. We asking you to move, Lord God, every name on that list. Glory. Riley, Miss Lou, Larry, I put myself on the list, Father, for pride. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Do what you, only you can do. Show up how you show up. And God, we ask that you will show off, Lord God. That's what you wanted to say, Lord God. So in that, I say, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Love y'all, brothers. Look here. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all, brothers. Uh, be safe out there. And, and Pastor, hey, don't bring no palm trees back. I, I ain't bringing them back with me. Too heavy. Okay. Don't hit me too heavy. <laughs> hey, hey, um, Pete. Pete, let me ask you something, Pete. Um, with the pictures, I got the pictures for um when we did the bowling and everything. Is there a way that we could put that on the group meet? I, yep. I started putting some already. You yeah, put some on there. Yeah, you got to get in there, okay? Jump on the group, man. You got to reactivate and then jump in. Get locked in, man. Uh, get locked yeah, in, okay? Come on, man. I'm going to tap in with my wife to my wife do my phone stuff for me. God, oh, oh, you got assistant. I'm sorry. God. Oh. Put, me my assistant, put my assistant on there. <laughs> that's, that's IT. <laughs> hey, Devin, be safe. Be safe down there, bro. Let me know how everything is, all right? Will do, man. All right, Pastor. Will enjoy you, right, I'll be blessed. Yes, sir. Love you. All right. Love you too, bro. Yes, sir.